how to run a business growth innovation program with no training, no support, and no processes. Sound interesting? Hang around. G'day, I'm Nils Vesk. You know, most people will tell you that you need an innovation structure, heaps of procedures, company-wide training, and an innovation team to run an effective innovation program. You know what? They're wrong. And it's one of the reasons why so many of these initiatives fail, because people make them too complex, stifling business growth innovation rather than enabling it. Now, some of you might say, but don't you provide these types of services, Nils? Yes, I do, but I make sure that the processes don't overwhelm and that the training feels like fun. The difference is in kind of knowing what will help people versus hinder them. And a massive hurdle that people face in changing their results is a behavioral one. And you can have the best process in the world, but if you don't know how to fundamentally change behavior, those processes are worth diddly squat. And today, I'm gonna to share with you the critical concepts you need to run a business growth innovation program without any processes, without any support, or any training. All so that you can get results happening now without having to implement costly programs. And you know, suppose you do want more structure, more training and support as your initiative grows. In that case, you'll know the fundamentals for the business growth innovation program are already there to enable you to succeed. This will mean that you can leave work on time and sleep easy knowing that your business growth results are coming day after day. All right, so let's dive in now. You know, there are four core pillars that you need to, to create behavioral change. Now, I've got, I reckon, over 20 years of psychological experience and techniques behind me. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but I did date one for 10 years and then probably spent the next 10 or 12 years in therapy understanding what went wrong. But seriously, behavioral science is one of the simplest ways to get more out of yourself and your team. And if it's a change in results you're looking for, then look no further than creating behavioral change. Now the four pillars you need to create behavioral change are, one, creating the one-two. This is the motivation, the desire, and need to do behavior. Two, creating the chance to, which is giving people the time, the space, and or permission to do the behaviors. Three, creating the how-to, which is learning the desired behavior and skill. Or four, which is about creating the prompt-to, which is knowing that every behavior follows a prompt. So let me break those down for you. First one, want-to. You know the reality is people are 100% motivated all of the time. It's just that they may not be 100% motivated by your business growth innovation. And to help change that, what we need to do is give an alternative story or narrative, if you want to be a bit fancy about it, to the one that's already going in their heads. Now, the existing story or narrative might be that innovation's too risky, that's too hard, or it's not worth it, you know? And your job is to share stories that help illustrate why business growth innovation is important. And you also need to share how it can actually be safe so that people can see themselves in this new story and replace their old story with your new one. And I unpack this in more detail in my latest resource, The Relaxed Innovation Leader's Guide to Getting Anyone to Innovate. Links um, in the comments to find out that more. Okay, two. We've got the first one, which is want to. Now we've got the chance to. You know, the reality is your people are very capable of innovating, but if you don't give them permission or time to do it, then nothing will happen. Um, if both of these are an issue, Call innovation something else and maybe ensure that there's a time code for their timesheet that gives them permission to work on it or employ what we call the five minute innovation techniques that we've shared some other sort of lessons before. Okay, so we've got that little part now. Now we wanna talk about three, which is the how to. Now we all have latent innovative and creative skills, many of which we had when we were children and we kind of lost that when we went to institutions, education, organizations and the sort. But not all of us know how to in innovate. In fact, very few of us do. But by showing them a technique or asking them how they could learn a technique is a cost-effective way to get training happening without spending any money. Um, I'll tell you about more about that in a few moments. Um, four, prompt two. So this is that all behaviors are triggered by a prompt of some kind. The prompt may be obvious or inconspicuous, but there are always prompts for every behavior we have. At its most basic, your phone rings, brr, brr, and it prompts you to pick it up. Your email chimes, bring, you've got mail, and you check your email inbox. 
Now the good news is that you can design for new desired behaviors, for example, innovation growth behaviors, by coupling a desired behavior or activity with an existing activity, so that an existing behavior becomes the prompt. For example, um, after our Monday morning check-in, I will write on the whiteboard and ask the team one idea generating question. Now, research by Dr. B.J. Fogg, the world's, I call him the world's leading habit scientist from Stanford University, he's shown that it's best to add new behaviors to follow an existing one. So some others could be, after I check my emails, I will, or after getting off the phone, I will. Make sure you check out his awesome book for more tips on that, tinyhabits.com. Um, you'll understand a lot more about how easy it is to tap into the power of habits. Okay, now while there are other components to consider, such as culture and specific observable measurable behaviors, the four pillars are more than enough to get great results. What I would suggest is to get people to prompt their own training. And I've often said to my clients, to get better results, you need to ask better questions. And this same approach can be used to help people to prompt their own training. And this is really useful when you don't have any money for any training. So here are some prompts to help people to train themselves by asking a question. So you might say or ask, how can I or how can we get better at identifying customer insights? Now, if you're not sure, an insight might be an emerging trend, an unmet customer need or a desire that we want to capitalize on. Um, or how can I or how can we get better at generating lots of good ideas? Another question might be, how can we get better at validating that the market is willing to pay for a solution uh, to this actual problem we've identified? Or how can we get better at validating that our solution effectively solves the problem? And finally, how can we get better at building and promoting our new solution cost effectively with maximum impact and engagement? By asking those questions, it puts what I call puts it into the toaster, and something's going to pop up eventually. You just got to keep asking those questions. Once you've worked through these questions, you can take it even further by using some other questions, such as what specific steps do we need to take in in what order to learn? Blah 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 blah. So if someone said, you know what we can do to get better at learning insights is we can um, start doing some, some reviewing the customer logs of customer complaint logs. What specific steps do we need to take in order, in what order to learn how to get better at insights by first doing the uh, process of reviewing the logs? So I think I lost myself there, but you get the idea. Now the one process that's absolutely critical to have, but simple enough that it can be drawn on the back of a napkin is that you want to have a transparent way to assess an idea to make sure that you're not going to undermine a team's drive to innovate. The fastest way you can kill any motivation is not to choose an idea objectively or fairly. And if you don't have a transparent process to pick the right solution in front of everyone, then you might have a mutiny on your hands in not too short a time. So what I'd suggest is you get your team and yourself to look back over all of your ideas and score your best three ideas out of 10 for each of the following areas. And then you add up your scores to see which one works best. So there's three criteria. Tactical, um, which is, is this a problem the market wants solved? Or how well does your idea respond to an insight? Or is this idea a strategic fit for the business? Uh, technical, you might think about, you know, out of 10, you might say, well, do you have the technical skills to solve this? Or how many unknowns are there with this idea? Or do you have the skills to solve them, or is it easy to find people who can do this cost effectively? Again, we're trying to get out out of 10. Now, the more unknowns, um, the, the lower the score, the, the less the unknowns, the higher the score, because obviously we want to know as much as we can. And then the third one is financial. How deep are the market's products? How big are the risks um, versus the reward? Um, how deep are the pockets of the market? So obviously, the lower the risk and the higher the return, the higher the score, which you get something like 10 out of 10. You could plot the ideas once you've scored them on a graph like the one I've drawn here before, or um, you could just use the numbers, pretty simple. Okay, so it's kind of like, um, next thing that you can do is what I call traffic lights versus rocket science. When it comes to strategy, many of us make it way too complex, and strategy at its best is when we can rapidly identify what we need to stop, what we should continue, and what we need to start doing. It's that simple. Just think of a set of traffic lights 
and apply them to the core sections of your organization. For example, what do we need to stop doing in our marketing? What should we continue doing in our marketing? Or what new things uh, could we be doing and should we start in our marketing? So you can also think of specific behaviors or you can think of activities or processes to do. And what we do is we encourage our clients to create a big chart. We often print them out at four meters or so length, um, 12 feet or so, and then we get them to put post-it notes. Everyone writes down what those behaviors might be and stick them up there. Um, that's it. So you might have the categories drawn as rows and the stop, start, and continue sections as columns. Um, yep, yeah, so you get them to write out their behaviors and processes that need to stop, continue on post-it notes on individual ones, and you stick them around. That's it. Okay, another one is how to get supported when no support is available or no support is being offered. Now, too often, people will um, see support as money, time, and people. You know, and while these are valuable, they often forget to talk about psychological support. Now, if you and your people are time poor, which is pretty much what most of our clients are, then you can counter this by looking at a five minute innovation technique. And the basis of doing this is just creating a five minute time limit to your innovation activity. So what we do is we use a timer um, and we'll say something, all right, we've got five minutes to develop ways to validate that the market would be willing to pay for our new solution. Or we've got five minutes to identify as many customer bottlenecks as possible. Now, I'm yet to find a company that will not find the money for a validated high ROI, low risk business growth innovation. And the back of the napkin process I shared before has helped many of my clients get funding and support without having to create some time wasting business case proposal. Now, getting people to help solve a business growth problem can be as simple as inviting them to a solution session. All you need to do is ask them in the right way so that they can see that they'll gain something from it as well. And a little bit of flattery and praise goes a long way. So, um, hi, Lisa, you know, you may have heard that the big priority for the business for this quarter is blah, blah, blah. And we think your genius thinking can help solve it. And you'll be able to share in the glory when it's done and dusted. Um, hey, look, we know your time is precious. So we've designed a rapid business growth solution session. It'll take no more than 20 minutes. In fact, we guarantee that when the 20 minutes is up, the meeting will be over. For one, we're doing a stand-up meeting, and secondly, we've made sure that someone else has booked up the room after the 20 minutes. Here's what we need to do next, blah, 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 blah. Something like that can really encourage someone to get, uh, I guess, get excited about your project. Okay, uh, a big issue, you know, like that goes unaddressed is psychological safety. Now, people want to feel safe, and they will avoid risks at all costs. But to counter this, um, we need to ensure that validation is discussed front and center at every session. Um, so just to put everyone's mind at ease, you know, whatever solutions we generate and uh, that we want to do in advance, we'll be doing rapid validation around so that no one and nothing is at risk. So framing up something like that just, you know, just tells people that, okay, my job is not in line if I come up with an idea that could apparently be risky because we're going to validate. Oh, here's a bonus facilitation technique to create a safe space to share ideas. And we can do this, start by getting people to write their ideas down to themselves, so on a post-it note, then get them to share with the person next to them, and only after that get them to share with the table, and then only after that get them to share with the whole group. And what this does is it reduces the anxiety and fear around sharing ideas. So make sure you check out the Relaxed Innovation Leader's Guide to getting anyone to innovate to see the full instructions. All right, so let's wrap this thing up. You now have a thorough overview of running a business growth innovation program with no training, no support, and no processes. Now, implementing this will take a small amount of effort to start with, but the results will come. So that's it from me. Oh, by the way, um, you might not know that we have a business growth innovation membership that actually gives you access to processes and techniques that can make your job so much easier um, with videos and step-by-step -step flowcharts. Just go to thereinventionclub.com um, for a look at ways to accelerate your business growth and career. I hope that's been of value today. Please let us know what you think of the technique. Message me, put on comments, give me a like, and if you like it even more, subscribe, and hopefully we can catch you next session. Catch you later. Bye.